Hey. Hey, Verge. Hey, Mark. Hey, everybody. Welcome to day seven. We're so glad you're joining us. We've got a lot to go over today. I'm Verge Cornelius, Lafayette High School, Oxford, Mississippi, and... I am Mark Rowley, Ryan High School in Denton, Texas, and you are at AB Calculus Day 7, Wednesday. <laughs> at... so, oh, yeah, that's right. If you're watching us, like, while it's... If you're watching right. us on release, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah. So, what are we going to learn today? Well, if you were, if you watched the last video, you know we're working with applications of integrals again. So... Area between curves and then verge, what does that lead naturally into? To me, it leads right into volumes of known cross sections. That's right. And then we talked about accumulation a lot yesterday. And today we're going to talk about accumulation and taking away <laughs> accumulation mm -hmm. in the sense of right in, right out. Yes, indeed. So yeah, to get us up, thinking think. about that, we've got a little warm up yeah. here for you. I think the warm up is going to address that head on. Mm hmm. So as always, feel free to pause it, to read this on your own or wait till I'm done reading it and then pause it and work it. A uh, cylindrical tank contains 26 liters of water. At noon, water is pumped in at a rate of 45 liters per minute. And water is also being released from the bottom at a rate of 25 liters per minute. At 30 minutes past noon, how much water is in the tank? Merge, you wanna? Yeah, is this, um, through this or? is this even like calculus active? All right. <laughs> well, I it's think not, it's about it's change. Not, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's about it. Yeah, conceptually it is, but yeah, what we think of as the mechanics of calculus, not so much. Um, yeah. So I mean, we could. I could. I could write an integral for this, right? Yeah, you're right. You're right. You could. Um, so the the tank and it doesn't have to be cylindrical necessarily starts with 26 liters of water and then um, we're going to add water to that because water is being pumped in so 45 times 30 is what's getting added to it and then meanwhile at the same time we're subtracting out that 25 liters a minute over that same 30 minutes and you do not have to write that definite integral in this case because these are just constant bubble. constant rates. Yep. Yeah. And in fact, I think the way that, I think the way both of us actually did this was like this. True. Yep. Is this is calculator active or not? That makes the arithmetic really easy. So it should be six twenty six. Yep. Let's see how we did. Yep. Answer C. C. I'm not going to get my pen out. That was a disaster yesterday. It's C. <laughs> is that a purple pen? And is that the same pen I gave you yesterday? It's a much more reliable pen, but it is purple. <laughs> All right, Verge. Uh, are you taking the camera now? or? Uh, not until you show oh, them the not folder. Yet. Oh, wow. Way too early. Yes. Yeah. Three minutes. So little, here's little, our folder. A little, little, little early on that. Uh, so yeah, let's practice. We need to give you the practice, right? Mm -hmm. The day seven folder or applications of integrals day two folder. Mm -hmm. Game that. Oh, you changed and the two. It was so cute when it was T O O. Yeah, the other one. The other one was was two, and this one uh -huh. is day two. Because yep. uh, the folders, I, I didn't want to name the folder that because at the end of this week you're gonna well, at the end of last week and the end of this week you you, you at home get access to the entire folder. I didn't want to name the folder day two with TOO and that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so hopefully folks have scanned and they have some sort of copy of what they're, what they're doing, whether they're looking at it on another screen or whether they printed it out. Um, but here we have, we're actually going to start with eight today. I know we're really changing it up a lot. But um, instead, making sure that the free response gets plenty of attention, we're going to start with our eighth question, which is a free response question. And like all free response questions, well, a lot of free response questions, um, there's a lot of stuff to kind of digest, no pun intended, I see chocolate here, but there's a lot of stuff to digest as you're going to go ahead and do this problem. So That's it's good funny, to read. While you're saying that, I'm just thinking, 
except for that one problem that we both saw last year it was like the minimal it was like yeah the, the stem was consider the function and then, then they asked a bunch of questions of it but yeah yes, that that right. does happen but the vast the vast majority are going to have lots of words and then this one you've got that calculator there so we know that we have our calculators at the ready so um a non-traditional confectionery plant contains a chocolate pond that is being supplied by a chocolate river starting at 9 a.m there are a thousand gallons of chocolate in the pond and the river is depositing more chocolate in the pond at a constant rate of 60 gallons per hour i might go ahead and underline some of this stuff the chocolate is pumped out of the pond to various parts of the plant at a rate modeled by the function l of t is equal to 58 plus 10 sine of pi over 4t in gallons per hour and t is the number of hours since 9 a.m I know this is probably not a surprise to you, but when you're reading, if you can form an image of what it is you are reading, then you are a strong reader. So if you can't get an image going in your head, read it again. Like my image is that there's this pond. I'm not saying I'm a strong reader, by the way. And there's this river kind of flowing into the pond. And then there's a pipe or something, some sort of a pump where the um, chocolate is draining out of the pond. So there's a thousand gallons when it starts. Um, there's um, chocolate coming in at 60 gallons per hour. And then there's chocolate leaving L of T at that rate of L of T. So you have an image in your mind of I'm adding this much and I'm subtracting this much and I'm being going to be able to build my my total amount that I need or whatever it is going on. All right. So in part A, it says evaluate the definite integral L of T dt using the correct units. Interpret your answer in the context of the problem. So what I'm going to do is I already actually put this on my calculator. And so I'm just going to go, it's in my Y1. Wow, I, I turned on my calculators having, okay, here it is. I'll show it to you guys. All right, it's already in my Y1. And I just, I'm going to go ahead and calculate this by going to math. Eh, I'm going to quit out of there. Sorry, I'm going to clear this. I'm going to go to math and I'm going to go down to option number nine. And I'm doing zero to eight of my y1. I only have one function in there. So alpha f4 and then y1 and then dx. OK, so there's my what I'm going to do. And it calculates 464 for me. So my answer here in A is 464. Now, what would this be using correct units? Well, I just took this rate and I multiplied it by this width, basically from zero to eight. So I took my gallons per hour and I multiplied it by hours. So I came up with gallons. Interpret your answer in the context of this problem. 464 gallons maybe were pumped out of the chocolate pond. And I'm going to leave it like that and have Mark tell me what's wrong with it. Actually, it's very right, but there's just something that's lacking. If you're asked to interpret the expression, you need to interpret everything in it. And we haven't addressed what the zero to eight represent. OK, so I would have to say 464 gallons were pumped out of the chocolate pond. Um, I could say from 9 a.m. to eight hours later. I could say from t equals zero to t equals eight. I could say over the course of the eight hours after nine o'clock, there's lots of ways. English, unfortunately, has lots of ways of saying the same thing. I, so, would, I would caution, though, what you what you don't want to say is during eight hours. Uh -huh. You don't want it to be a general eight hours because that could be 10 a.m. until 6 p.m. or whatever. And so you do want to have the eight hours from zero to eight or like merged in it where you just address t equals zero and t equals eight. Yeah, that's how I usually do it. Okay, and Mark will knows that he could just comment on stuff as needed as we're doing this. All right, part C, and I'm, we're we're going to skip B. Well, we've done ones a lot like that, and you should do it on your own and check your answers later in the week. But in part C, it says, is the amount of chocolate in the pond increasing or decreasing at t equals four? Justify your answer. 
So we want to know, um, is the amount of chocolate in the pond increasing or decreasing at t equals four? So this to me, if it's increasing or decreasing, it makes me think that I need to take a derivative. So I, I personally would like to take a derivative of a function and then maybe see what's happening at four, substitute the four in. But I was never really given a function here for the amount of chocolate. So I think I'm going to write it for myself and I'm going to call it A of T. So A of T, my amount of chocolate at time T is going to be my starting amount, a thousand plus my amount going in. So that's 60 T, 60 gallons per hour and then minus my amount that is leaving. So my amount that is leaving is actually the integral of the rate. So the integral from, let's see, zero to T, and I don't know my, if my variables are gonna get all messed up here, but I'm, not, I'm gonna be kind of casual about it. Of 58 plus 10 sine of pi over four T, and then DT. Again, if I were going to be really careful, I, I might switch those to be X's. What do you think, Mark? Yeah, there's going to be some people who really want those to be something other, anything other than T. Um, but good thing I have an erasable pen. That's right. But we can discuss after hours why I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> there's the people who care very deeply, though. So. It, and it, you know, the thing is, you don't actually have to do it this way. You can actually kind of hop into a different situation. But I think it's important to connect up the fact that you're going to talk about an increasing or decreasing f of x function by taking the derivative and seeing the sign, S-I-G-N. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I want to go ahead and take uh, and the, the derivative. And the, function, and the function you wrote is going to come in handy later. And that's not uncommon. Yeah. So the derivative of the 1,000 is 0. The derivative of 60t is going to be 60. And then minus, I'm taking the derivative of the integral. So that's fundamental theorem there. And I'm just going to go ahead and say that that result ends up being 58 plus 10 sine of pi over 4t. Um, and I've got those parentheses around there because I have to distribute that negative. Because we are subtracting all the chocolate that gets pumped out. Yeah. And now I want to figure out what's going on at um, 4. So it's going to be 60 minus 58 minus 10 sine of pi, because I'm putting in a 4 for t and that cancels. And now I think to myself, well, shoot, I could have just looked at entering minus leaving and, and at t equals 4, and I could have figured out the sign of that. I, I didn't have to really do any calculus per se, um, so I could have done it that way also. But in any yes. case... Go ahead. What you as I say, what you found is a lot like our warm up. If we had just said at what rate is you know how how would we figure out the, the rate at which the tank is changing? Mm -hmm. and it's that rate in minus rate out. Yeah. yeah. So that's a, that's exactly right. So this is rate in minus rate out. And I could have looked at the sign of that at t equals four, but again, because of these words increasing and decreasing and the, the amount, it made me think that I needed to take a derivative. So there's a lot of different ways that you can pull this off. Sine of pi is zero. Of course, it's calculator active, so I could type it in. Um, so this whole term knocks out. I'm getting 60 minus 58, which is two. So, um, so increasing at uh, t equals four because a prime of four is greater than zero. Because Verge defined a, she can do, she can refer to a prime and mm -hmm. handily use that notation through the rest of the problem, which you guys can do that on the AP test. It's, you yep. can find your own functions. Yeah, just make sure you don't call it something like L of T by accident. Right. Yeah, don't, <laughs> yeah, don't, don't use something that's already been reserved. Yeah. All right. Part D says set up but do not evaluate an integral expression for the average rate at which chocolate was pumped out of the pond during the interval from two to six inclusive. So the average rate at which chocolate was pumped out, that to me sounds like I need to, and they're also saying set up an integral. So these are some keys here that I'm thinking to myself, I need to really kind of set up average value, average value of this rate of the pumped out, so the leaving. So I'm gonna say the integral, or sorry, one over six minus two times the integral from two to six of, I can just call it L of T DT if I want. I could bring in this entire expression and put it as my integrand. 
I could subtract two from six and get a four and put one fourth out there, but this is this is fine and that's all I need to do. I think I like the fact that it says that you have to write an integral expression because you could have done a of six minus a of two over six minus two. Oh yeah. Because you had to find a, but then you would have had to rewrite it with the integrals. So it, it keeps you from being able to just say, well, it's just a of six minus a of two and not define that really well. Mm -hmm. That's true. But, it, but understanding how all these things are connected is just so sweet when you start to realize that. Well, yeah. And actually that wouldn't have worked anyway, right? Because that would have brought the 60 in. So. Oh yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. That, that was a mark. So that wasn't total. That wasn't total pumped out. That was. This is only pumping, pumping out. Yeah. Yeah. All right, and then E, I think I'm going to go ahead and, and do a little bit of folding. Um, e says, how much chocolate is in the pond? Okay, that was pretty slick. Okay, how much chocolate is in the pond at time t equals eight? Show the work that leads yourself. to your answer. What's that? Or did you impress yourself? Yeah, that's not hard. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. So how much chocolate is in the pond at time t equals eight? Well, that brings me back to my original mental image that I had when I was um, reading this. Well, I started with a thousand and then I was adding 60 gallons every hour and we're going over eight hours. And then I had the leaving, the integral from zero to eight of my leaving function. So L of t dt. And while we're just writing that, you know, it said show the work on a calculator active problem. She is currently showing the work. That's right. I feel like I've kind of gotten some of these. Like that was 464, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this ends up being a thousand um, plus 480 and then minus 464. So this ends up being a thousand sixteen, maybe. Does that sound about right? That's okay. Yep. All right. But, so yeah, and of course you could just throw that all in the calculator as well, but it's nice it's nice when you can save a little time using those numbers. Yeah, this is not showing your work. <laughs> well, <laughs> wait a minute here. Yeah, you'd really want to be a little bit more clear. You want to say where that 480 and 464 came from, yeah. 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 Well, okay. You said 464, draw an arrow at it say from part A or something. From like part that. A, something. true. Yeah. That's true cuz we did we did do that. That's true. Okay. And then finally, in part F, it says during that time interval from zero to eight, when is the amount of chocolate in the pond a maximum? Justify. Well, it was either yesterday or the day before when we were talking about we're going to do a real live candidates test later. And that's exactly how I'm going to um, justify this. I'm going to try and figure out where my um, at what time my chocolate in the pond is at a maximum and my candidates for there being the maximum would be my endpoints so zero and eight and it would also be my my um, places where my my rate is equal to zero or my derivative of my amount so let's see if I can get that little folded paper back again so the derivative the derivative here where is this where is this equal to zero okay because that's where your candidates are they're going to be your endpoints and and they could be also where i'm just going to be loose here with f prime equaling zero or f prime um, undefined as long as that's part of the the domain of the original function so i really need to think about where is that a prime of t equal to zero so where is that 60 minus 58 plus 10 sine of pi over 4t, where is that equal to zero? It's really L of t, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could write 60 minus L of t, where is that equal to zero? Yep. Now, it depends on how much you want to do like mental math before you go to your calculator. Um, I mean, I would I would probably do 60 minus 58 and get two. And then so I have two minus 10 sine of pi over 4t. And then I would go ahead and subtract two from both sides, divide both sides by 10 and get one fifth equals sine of pi over 4t. But you could you could definitely put all of this into your y1 and put this into your 
Y2 and find the intersection that way. But I, I think I would put probably, I'm gonna put this into my Y2, this into my Y1 and, and find the intersection. Cause this, this is calculator active. That's not a unit circle value. I did, so I, did six, I, did six, I did 60 in L of T. Okay, yep. So but then yeah, you have to like change six. your window and stuff like that. So right. yeah. Right. Oh, look at that. To, but I don't have to divide two by 10. Yeah. So one fifth, yeah, yeah. And I don't know what my window's like right now. Let's just take a look at the graph and see what we see. So this blue one is, it's not L of T because um, I did a, I did do some solving right. there. And then I have like my one windows. fifth. What's that? Oh, it looks like your window's zero to two. I think that's left over from a previous problem. Oh, you're right. That's really important. So I need to change my, my window to be zero to eight because maybe it's more than one time. Here we go again. The height was really nice for a trig function though. Yeah, at least for a sinusoidal wave. Mm -hmm. Boink, boink. All right, so I need to find these intersections. So calculate the intersection. I'm gonna do this one that where the cursor is first. And I'm getting 3.47, 36. Boy, my eyes are getting bad. 3.7436. And then I have zero. I have eight. Okay. And then I need to go over here. Do it again. I don't know if that's going to take, but yeah, got to go over again. I'll just type then... it in. I use like 8.2 or whatever. What's that? You can type to jump on the graph. You could have just like typed 0.2 instead of. Oh, yeah. okay. That's good to know. So 0. 0.2563. Okay. I usually remember when I'm halfway there. <laughs> yeah. All right. So here's my candidates, my endpoints, and my two places where um, 60 minus L of T equals zero. And I want to find my amount, my A of T. Well, I know my amount at zero. That's a thousand, right? Mm -hmm. And I know my amount at eight because I solved for it already. Part E right up there above it. Yeah. Yeah. And then I need to find these these other amounts. And and this is going to be, I don't want to take too much time right now, but this is going to be typing in that same exact thing that I already did right here, but with the 0.2563 in there for eight and up in here for eight. Am I right, Mark? Yeah, and yeah, and, and if if you, just to save a little, if you if you are going to be typing it all in, you can put the 60 minus L of T inside a single integral. Mm -hmm. and, and all it's doing is multiplying oh. the 60 by, by that upper bound. Yeah, but but then you don't have to type in that upper bound twice. Yeah, but once you do that, you do get these other two values. And can we now see which one is the maximum? Yes, we can. Uh, it looks like 2016 is mm -hmm. the maximum. And it said, when is the amount of chocolate in the pond a maximum? Not what is the maximum, but it's at it's at that end point. So it's at uh, t equals eight hours the amount of chocolate is a max, something like that. Okay, and I did that quick because I want to make sure we have enough time to do other things like area and volume and Mark's going to take it from there. So go ahead, Mark. All right, let's field screen. I'm going to scoot you over because you're in front of my screen right now. <laughs> I am not in front of your screen. Well, you're they take the, the, the footage of you. Um, okay, so this is number eight, which we just did. So I'm gonna do a little paper folding. We're looking at nine, just B and D. Number nine, and scoot it down a little bit. And we've got, let S be the shaded region in the first quadrant enclosed by the Y axis and the graphs of Y equals three minus three, three sorry, three minus three to the X and y equals the square root of x is shown in the figure to the right. And I have this nice figure over here. Find the area of s, and we're gonna, then a couple of volume questions, but let's go ahead and just um, knock off this area. Um, we're not gonna do the area because we, we do wanna save time for some other problems. And this is something you guys have been doing for a while, but you do notice they're not labeled. They're both called y. So you do have to be able to realize that three minus three x is this curve. 
because three minus three to the zero is two and recognize the square root curve coming up through here. So it's gonna be three minus three to the X minus the square root of X integrated from zero to that intersection. I'm gonna go ahead and find that intersection because that is gonna be something I am gonna need throughout the problem, so. And don't forget to write down the Y coordinate too. <laughs> yep. You never know if you need that Y coordinate. Uh, yeah, I mean, if we read through them all, I would know, but even then, sometimes it sneaks up on you, are like, oh man, this is going to be a dy. So, I'm going to, here's my normal, and I could zoom in on that if I wanted to, but that's a pretty nice graph, and we can see it looks like the same shape. And I'm going to second calculate my intersection, and I'm going to label that on here, so that is the point. 0 0.70, oops, I not press it, not lifting my pen up enough. So 0 0.701 dot dot dot, 0.837, man, horrible. My handwriting, we've talked about this. <laughs> but I'm also gonna say, I'm gonna call that AB. I'm going to call that the point AB, and I'm going to say over here, A is 0 0.701, and the same pen you gave me yesterday that was giving me trouble. Mm. And I'm putting the dot, 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 because I am not going to round these. I'm going to keep the whole number. I don't want error creeping up into my answers. And the way I'm going to keep these is, those are my last X and Ys on screen. So I'm going to come out to the home page and do X and store, and I'm gonna use A and B, and that's why I chose those. I'm gonna store X into B, and alpha one pulls up the Y, and I'm gonna store that into B. So I've, I now have those A and B available to me for the rest of the problem. And that is so, something I never do, but that is such a good idea. I hope my students are looking at that and ready to practice it. <laughs> and so that's what I would do for, for A, you can type it in the calculator, find that on your own, check yourself on in the Friday folder or Thursday afternoon folder, whatever I'm calling it now. Uh, this region S, and I, I believe we said we were going to do B next. Yeah, see the one that I put a question mark next to. Um, oh no, we're doing that one too. Never mind. Region S forms the base of a salad whose cross sections are perpendicular to the x-axis. And they are whose cross sections are perpendicular to the x-axis, and they are rectangles of height X. Write an expression involving one or more integrals that gives the volume of the solid and find the volume. So I'm going to draw all over this because I actually made multiple copies of this picture. I can do more. So perpendicular to the x axis, right? That's important. And I'm just going to draw a couple of these top down. And I'm looking down at these rectangles and I'm seeing this because they're perpendicular to the x axis. And so those are rectangles that I'm looking down on. And the way I do these, I do a couple of things different right off the bat. I'm looking at what kind of cuts am I making? The, and I, I always picture um, getting cheese or, um, or, or, or at the deli, ordering to at a deli and slicing it. You know, just going, and where does that blade start? And it hits at X equals zero. And then it's moving along the X axis until we get to this 0 0.701. So these are gonna be dx cut from zero to a. And so that's where I start. And then to integrate, to, sorry, to integrate area, area is two dimensions. I'm integrating by this third dimension of x and that's gonna give me volume in terms of x. So now I need to figure out what are the area of these things? So this is where it becomes important to realize they are rectangles of height x. And they will give you formulas for cones and sometimes even cylinders and stuff on the AP test. Sphere, maybe. There are some, yeah, there are some basic formulas, plain geometry like triangles and circles and squares and rectangles that you're expected to know the area of. So, Verge, help me out with the area of a, of a rectangle. Oh, length times width or base times height, however you want to think about it. Yep. And those, and they gave me the height. The height is X. And when I'm looking down at these, I'm seeing the tops, but that means I'm also seeing the base. Mm -hmm. So the base is this difference, which is 
3 minus 3 to the x minus the square root of x. And so that's what I'm going to import in here. x times 3 minus 3 to the x minus the square root of x. And then I'm going to type it in that, type it like that right in my calculator. So integral from 0 to a. Minus three to the x. I could use y1 and y2 since I put those in to graph them, but honestly, I think I'm faster at typing this than I am at going up to the alpha menu and finding y1 and y2. But, um, you know, tomato, tomato, right? Mm -hmm. And I get 0.6558 for this volume. Also, volume and area are tough because that number may actually seem. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh -uh, no, it's not. not what I got. That, that's actually the answer to A. I forgot my X. I always try to forget my X's. <laughs> Sometimes I'm more successful than others. You had it right in the integral. I mean, you know, but no, then you just uh, what I wrote, Yeah, no. Right. All I, I would have just lost the answer point. I would have gotten everything except the answer point because I typed it in the calculator wrong. So zero. But what I was going to say was it's good that you see these because that's the answer to A that I said I wasn't going to find. And this number appears smaller, and you might think volume's bigger than, but this is cubic units and this is square units. So they don't really mat, mesh up really well because, like, you know, a square of side half has area one fourth, but it has volume of one eighth. And so it's cubic units. Yes, that ran through my mind when I was doing these problems. I was like, these numbers are just acting strange. And then I was well, realizing, and if, but and if, you you look square, at the bounds, if you square yeah, well, numbers in between zero and one, they do get right. smaller. <laughs> and I was gonna say, our bounds are less than one and we're, multi yeah. so we're multiplying lots of numbers that are less than yeah. one, so they get smaller. Yeah. All right, on to C. And because I drew all over that, I have my backup. together. It's a little humid here today. All right. So write an expression involving one or more integrals that gives the volume of the solid generated when S is revolved about the y-axis. So I'm going to kind of mirror that point. This is my point AB again. So like we talked about this yesterday a little bit that I always like to draw pictures. We talked about a, it today even. I drew a picture on. of a pond. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you did. And so we get this shape. And so we're getting this circular shape and we can see those cross sections. I do three of, I drew three of those cross sections in there and they are definitely circular cross sections. So my area is pi r squared. That's what we're going to be integrating. But look at the cuts this time. To, slice, to get circular cross sections, I'm slicing this way now. I'm doing horizontal cut, which means that when I'm slicing these pieces out, my, my little cutter here is starting at zero and finishing at two. So it's going to be from zero to two dy. So I'm going to need area in terms of y. And there's something else super special going on in this one is if I start looking at the radius here, it's that distance to that point x, y. But this radius, I call it little r, is to x, y on a different curve. So not only are we going to have to go from 0 to 2, we're going to have to break this into two parts. This is why we're that y to, value is important, yeah, <laughs> writing gonna, it down. Right, this is why that y value is super important. Like You're almost like, oh, we get to go right by it because we could go 0 to 2. But I'm going to have to cut this shape at b, right, at that height b. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do 0 to b pi r squared dy plus b to 2 pi r squared dy. So we have to go find these r's. Well, that's simple enough. r is just x, and big r is just x. But big, what, what's the but, Virg? Well, everything needs to be in terms of y. Right. So that's, you have to yeah. take that y equals root x and solve for x. So I'm going to call this 
x1. So x1 is y squared. Mm -hmm. So this is going to become y squared squared. Yep. From 0 to b. And big R, oh my goodness. That that it was y equals 3 minus 3 to the x. So you got to um, spread 3. Yep. Divide by that negative. I'm actually going to bring that over here. Mm -hmm. When I divide by the negative, the y becomes negative and the 3 becomes positive. So I'm going to reverse that. And then to get rid of that 3, um, I would do this in my head, uh, but I know that's not true for everybody. So I'm going to take a natural log. You could use common log if you wanted to, because I'm typing this into a calculator, but I like the natural log. This is the way I did it as well, but you can also just change the form. You could say log base 3 of 3 minus y. And the calculator will let you do log base 3. Yeah. Yep. So you absolutely could do log base 3 of 3 minus y into the calculator yep. there. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you said that. Because mm -hmm. that's what I almost did because we were doing logs in my algebra two class while reviewing the other day. Well, right. My niece is in pre-cal right now. So we've been doing so many of these skills, you know, in an isolated fashion. And boy, here they are, right? <laughs> right in calculus yeah. where you need them, yeah. right? I always like when the classes intersect at the same like, topics. Okay. So I'm inserting that log three minus y over log three. And again, you could write that log base three of three minus y. That's just a change of base formula if you ever heard of that, um, squared times pi. That's my pi r squared for the top half from b to 2. And then my pi r squared for the bottom half is y squared squared. Um, when I go to the calculator, I'm going to interpret all of those as x's. Uh, do you want to see me type this one in, Verge, or do you want me to do a magic oven thing? Um, I think we, they can do it themselves, and you can move on to d, and they can check their work at the end of the week. Yeah. Because this is all I would write on the AP test. <laughs> I would type that onto the calculator. True. And... But they should do it themselves and make sure they're getting it correct. Yeah, absolutely. I've done it three times. And one of the times I didn't square the second one and I got a negative number. And that was disconcerting. <laughs> the volume should not be negative. Right. All right. Um, D, well, on D, let me zoom out, right? We are revolving around the x axis now. I'll mirror that parabola here. So let's scoot this up for a second. I've got, I'm not, I'm not on the flattest of surfaces actually. And it's not perfect. It doesn't have to be. I'm just going to do one cross section this time because what kind of cross sections are we getting? Washers. Yeah, and it's important, it. it's important that we really understand that we're talking about those washers that are used in home repairs. Um, or sometimes you find them, they fell off a truck like a, you know, they could be huge even, but they are. One of my, one of my students a long time ago thought we were talking about like, washers like the washing machine or something like that oh wow not, not yeah, that kind of washer that's a little more confusing <laughs> yeah all right so i have revolved this volume s now around the uh the, the x-axis and created these these washers and you can kind of see this one slice right here and it has an outer radius that's being determined by this curve so our outer radius is 3x minus 3 3 minus 3 to the x. I reversed it when I was solving that other one. And then my inner radius is the square root of x. And honestly, this does parallel the other thing we did. It's just because this is really r equals y1 2 and r equals y1, right? Mm -hmm. And then we just solved the y for in terms of x, which was given. Um, and washers, the area looks like this, which is just pi r squared minus pi r squared factor to pi out front, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to do pi integral. And this is that point. So I still have that point AB stored in. Now, you don't have to use A, right? You could write 
what is the value of a 0. 0.7 0. 0.709 you know, I could write yeah. 0.709 dot 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 up here but if oh. I've defined a is that value I can do that as well though here I have another a for area so who on me for that and it's um, 0. 0.7019 just good reason yeah. to store it and write a <laughs> um and so my big r is 3 minus 3 to the x squared and my little r is square root of x squared um, and you type that all in the calculator and get 4.36 which is a much larger value than the other one but if you think about it that other one this is like like we said 0 0.701 and when you spin it it's still really small this one is at two and coming all the way to two. So these washers are a lot bigger than those little disks were that we were getting out of the other shape. Mm -hmm. It's generating a much bigger volume. And they're bigger, the values are bigger than one. So as we multiply, they get larger. All right. Well, cool. Now we get to go do some multiple choice. How are we doing on time, Mark? Um, oh, pretty tight. <laughs> gonna make some decision. Um, number one, not gonna do number one. <laughs> uh, number one, let, let R be the region bounded by a line and a parabola. What is the area? Um, it's non-calculator. So you are expected to be able to find where those intersect. But if you set those equal to each other and move things around and factor like you learned to in Algebra 2 and Algebra 1, you'll be able to find the intersects and find that area just like we did in 10A or 9A, whatever that was. Um, I already wasn't planning on doing two because those are squares. Uh, we already did rectangles. The squares are actually easier because it's just base squared. But I do want to talk about number three before I hand this back to Verge. Yes, we have this graph. Where f of x is cosine of 3 pi over 2x, and g of x is negative x. And these are shown in the figure above. Graphs intersect at the points a, d, b, e, d, f. So somebody that did the same game that I do. Which of the following expressions gives the area? Well, what's different about this area than the one we did already in number and the one that's in number one, Virg? It's got two different, it's got like the top and the bottom flip, like right. the top function, the bottom function interchange. We talked about this a little bit. You do have to know your parent function. And as funny as that sounds, that means you have to be able to tell which of those curves is the cosine wave and which of those is the line. But this one is, for this area, we have f minus g. And for this area, we have g minus f. And so a possible answer would be two integrals. But we mm -hmm. don't see two integrals. Mm -hmm. um, just integrating from a to c of f minus g, well, that's going to make this area negative, And we're going to find the net change. It's going to cut a little piece out. Um, being the absolute value of the differences, that's going to actually be a pretty good idea because that makes g minus f positive. I'm going to stay on this one. Um, taking the absolute value after we do a, that's just going to make the answer positive if it wasn't already, which it actually was. But And taking the absolute value of f, that would be reflecting f like this and reflecting cosine like that. And that's, oh my gosh, that's a whole different world of hurt. Um, yeah, that's not work. So we're going to go back to B. <laughs> yeah, that's so we can do this absolute value. I, I really like this idea of taking the absolute value of every single difference because now they're all positive. And as we add up those infinite rectangles, F minus G and G minus F being positive, we get the area bounded. So. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, yeah, so sorry about that. I talked a lot about those volume problems. Um, but it's okay. I think I think yep. that you know if teachers are rushing, they might not do as much volume at the end. I know I feel that way sometimes. So it's good to be thorough on that. All right. You want? Do you want to take it away for four? And five yeah, or? I'll go ahead and do four. Um, and I do have to tell a joke. I haven't told a joke even oh, yet. Oh my so. gosh, we haven't had our joke yet. No, people, people, I know. People, people have sped us up to two times just to get to the joke. This joke is: What do baby parabolas eat? I love this joke. What do baby parabolas eat? Quadratic formula, of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I, I do want to be. <laughs> What's that? 
that I like that joke more than I should. I know it's so sweet. I love that joke. And I think the illustration was just on point. It was really, really good. Um, I do want to be respectful of people's time. So um, I, I do want to do four. And then I, th I think I was supposed to also do five, but we'll see if we have enough time for both of those. But in four, we have this, this graph and it's a graph of F prime. And it says a portion of the graph of F prime, the derivative of F is given consisting of two line segments and a quarter circle. Given that F of negative two equals one, find F of three. This really reminds me of our warm up from, I think it was yesterday where we have the derivative. I think yesterday we had like H prime and then we have one value and then we're looking for the other value. So I really, I like to set up an integral here. I think about, okay, my X values are negative two and three. So I wanna think about the integral from negative two to three of F prime of X dx. And I know from fundamental theorem, this is gonna equal F of X evaluated from X equals negative two to X equals three. Or I could write F of three minus F of negative two. And I know that F of negative two is one so I'm looking for f of three, and now I have to figure out this area right here. So the integral from negative two to three of f prime of x dx. So from negative two to three is gonna be this area, which is a triangle, plus this area, which is a quarter circle. And this should be negative when we bring it in. Okay, so we have base times height divided by two. So we have three times two is six divided by two is three. That's my triangle. Then I'm gonna say minus because this is an underneath. Um, my circle formula is gonna be pi r squared, but divided by four. And my radius here looks like it's two. So I'm gonna have pi times two squared divided by four. So that's gonna be just pi. If I add one to both sides, I combine that with the three. And so I know that three plus one is four, four minus pi should be my answer. And, um, I really, I'm glad you actually did that one that way because we are gonna you know, obviously cut five, but if you do five the way Verge did this one, it's a lot easier for a lot of people because it, because it goes left and right on a graph um, if you set it up with fundamental theorem for each one, it's really, you'll add and subtract the 23 and the 21 correctly. And also coming full circle, no pun intended, with all the circles we've seen tonight, um, the uh, the maximum, this this to me is, is reading like a candidate's test. I would probably set up a table Man. here and put a whole bunch of ABCDs or my Xs, figure out the Ys and see uh, which H of X is the biggest. And then that will be that biggest amount. Absolutely so. agree. Yep. All well, right. we're we've come to the end of another session. I mean, I know this is not true for for a lot of people, and and um, probably not true for even people watching. But gosh, math is so much fun. I just we just blow through the time. It's crazy how quickly it goes. Um, but let's think about what we did do. So, what should we take away? We should expect to be tested on the area volume right out. Definitely expect to see those on free response and on multiple choice yep. finding volume um, you're integrating an area so all those cross sections are the ones that we're responsible for communication is an important part of the exam you need to tell them what you're doing even if you're doing it on the calculator you write down the integral write down the derivative draw yeah. pictures <laughs> So our next time is our last time yeah. and we are going to have for you a micro mock mini exam yep. um, or something of that order and, and we're going to just bring bring back some of the examples maybe we didn't get to right yeah definitely so if you've done all that work you can kind of hear some explanations perhaps um so and that's it. It goes just so fast, but we know that you guys are working hard and you're going to do well in this exam. You still have a lot of time, even after our last, last session, to um, practice some more. So we hope that you do that um, a little bit every day. Thank you guys. Got seven hours in. Got one yeah. left. Yeah, we wouldn't be here without you. So come on back for the last one. <laughs>